This year marks the 20th anniversary of Macau's return to China and its emergence as a special administrative region. Over the past two decades, Macau SAR has undergone a remarkable transformation, experiencing improvement to its economy, educational system and to the livelihood of its residents. So why has Macau been able to develop as successfully as it has? How has it been able to follow a very different path than its neighbour, the Hong Kong SAR? And what lessons had China learned to draw from its unique one country, two systems policy? To discuss these issues and more, I'm joined in our Beijing studio by Dr. Chu Qiang from the Yenming University of China and from Macau via satellite, Dr. Jonathan Troy Kun Shum, founding chairman of the Guangdong Hong Kong Macau Bay Area Entrepreneurs Union and Professor Hu Weixing, Dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences at the University of Macau. That's our topic. This is Dialogue. I'm Pan Deng. Let's start with a resounding notion from President Xi Jinping's keynote speech at uh, Friday morning's uh, ceremony marking the 20th anniversary of Macau's return to China. He emphasized that Hong Kong and Macau affairs are purely China's own and the Chinese government and the Chinese people will not allow any foreign interference. And in that speech, he also praised Macau's national security legislation and enforcement. What's the main signal here? I think the message is loud and clear mm. that Hong Kong and Macau is part of China and is under the full sovereignty of China. So that makes everything very clear, isn't it? Mm. Does China have the rights to point fingers to other countries? Can China meddling with other countries' domestic affairs? I don't think so. Mm. And China never do that. So this is the basic principle of the modern national and international relations. So I think everybody should respect that. And I think that's the very cornerstone of the UN and of all the other international organizations, which was endured by all the other countries and regions. Mm -hmm. And for more insights, let's uh, talk to Professor Hu Weixing in Macau. Professor, what's your take on President Xi Jinping's key notion here? Uh, I agree with Professor Chi's uh, uh, remarks that uh, uh, if China does not uh, meddle with other countries' affairs, uh, of course others cannot form point fingers at China uh, how it's uh, handling uh, affairs in Macau in Hong Kong. So this is uh, something uh, the Chinese have to uh, do their uh, business uh, to make the two uh, special administration region. Uh, prosperous and uh, you know have uh, social stabilities. In uh, President Xi Jinping's speech, he detailed four key aspects of Macau's successful experience in the past two decades, and these four uh, aspects are all about the successful implementation of the one country, two systems policy and more importantly he mentioned this um, social and political foundation for the successful implementation of this policy he the key word here is patriots as majority to implement macau people governing macau what's your reading into this i i think that's very important uh, the social political foundation for the uh, for the Macau's uh, uh, stability is uh, b should build on the uh, people really identify their motherland to, to have a correct political identity, and the patriotism is the foundation for the uh, for the society for the for the whole social sentiment here. Uh, without uh, you know uh, patriotism, without uh, identify with the mainland, uh, you know. Uh, the uh, one country, two system model will not succeed. Also, President Xi Jinping has praised Macau for being consistent on the right direction of the one country, two systems uh, policy. So tell us more, uh, what's your understanding of this right direction? And looking at the unrest in Hong Kong that's been going on for almost uh, six months now, what lessons can be learned for Hong Kong? I, in my personal opinion, what uh, Professor President Xi referred to the right direction is something uh, Macau have done right. Uh, for instance, Macau, uh, since its return to the Chinese sovereignty, 
Uh, in 2009, uh, the SAR have passed national security legislation uh, that prevent any uh, subversion actions in Macau to against the mainland. Another thing is Macau pay a lot of attention to to the youth uh, education, which is uh, from very young, very beginning, uh, young people, students should be educated in the in the right way, should love their country, and uh, that's very important. And also, uh, Macau, um, uh, since uh, its return to the Chinese sovereignty, uh, have uh, the old, have 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 put into place the uh, old institutional measures to pr to. Uh, to uh, guarantee the social stabilities. So there's no um, upheaval, social unrest, uh, like um, you know, what you have seen in Hong Kong. So that's a uh, basic guarantee for the social stability and the economic prosperity. And by doing that, Macau's economy has also seen a significant boom and maybe diversification. So uh, Dr. Tri, what uh, Macau has done right in terms of its economic development after its return to China? I think in the past 20 years, the GDP growth is, is, uh, uh, boom, is booming. It's, uh, I think 20 years ago, uh, compared with today, is almost seven times uh, increase of the GDP. And also, the uh, uh, GDP per capita is uh, the uh, ranking number second in the world. I think it's the, one of the best economic uh, achievement uh, did in the uh, Macau today. But uh, as you know that, uh, the most successful industry here is the gaming. Therefore, because of the gaming industry, uh, it attracts of a lot of tourists. It is the hottest uh, tourist uh, uh, destination of uh, one of the world's destination for tourism. And uh, I just feel that uh, if only tourism uh, it doesn't, uh, it's no good for uh, Macau. Therefore, diversified economy is more important. Uh, what they are looking for in the future will be characteristic um, uh, uh, finance uh, industry. Uh, other than that, technology, uh, more coming is uh, the cultural uh, industry. I think that's all it's uh, talking about uh, in Macau today. And I just feel that for the uh, government, uh, besides the uh, diversified economy, uh, the new chief executive will spend more time about the youth, uh, cultural development and also uh, the governance of, uh, of, the, of uh, Macau today. Uh, so Dr. Trial, we'll be going through uh, Macau's economy sector by sector later, but now let's get back to uh, the guidelines laid out by Chinese President Xi Jinping talking about Macau's sustainable and healthy economic development. He mentioned this uh, key positioning of one center, one platform, and one base. What does that exactly mean for Macau? I think that's important for Macau. Uh, as I just mentioned, uh, that uh, for the one center, it means the uh, tourism and uh, leisure center. Uh, because of that, uh, we got the gaming industry and also convention exhibition center and all this. That is the one center. The second one is the one platform. As you know that uh, Macau in the past, it was the Portuguese, economy, uh, Portuguese colony. Therefore, they are close with the uh, uh, Portuguese-speaking countries. Therefore, they would like to build a Portuguese uh, port a business hub uh, platform uh, for Macau. That is the number two uh, point he mentioned. The third one is the base. The base, since uh, Macau itself have the Portuguese culture and is very international, Therefore, uh, besides promoting the Chinese culture, we have to integrate with the international world. Therefore, uh, the uh, so-called uh, international uh, culture exchange base is important for Macau. Therefore, one center, one platform, and one base. That is the concept behind. So let's talk a little bit more about uh, the role of gaming industry in uh, Macau's uh, economy. Do you think this very particular industry is here to stay? Because um, with the rise of other sectors, does that necessarily mean that gaming industry is going to decline in the future? Uh, I don't think so, uh, because one, because uh, the uh, central government allowed Macau of the gaming industry. That's why the economy has been booming in the past years. But if that continues to be the only industry in Macau, I think it's no good for Macau. It's not sustainable. Therefore, the Chinese government would like. Uh, not only gaming industry, 
but they want to build as a tourism and leisure center. That means that we have tourism and also at the same time we uh, promote convention and exhibition center for Macau. That is more diversified. Other than the game industry, we would like to have more other opportunity for the young people. For example, technology, finance, and many more. That's the uh, future of Macau. Well, gentlemen, we'll be getting back to you. But now, uh, Dr. Chu, what do you make of uh, Macau's um, economy in the near future? Because in uh, Mr. Ho Itsan, the new chief executive of Macau, in his inauguration speech, he mentioned four specific sectors, uh, exhibition, uh, Chinese traditional medicine, uh, culture and uh, innovation uh, industries, and also high tech. But earlier, uh, Dr. Choi just mentioned uh, maybe finance could be another sector with great potential. Do you think so? I think Macau is doing pretty well in the traditional industry like gaming. And also uh, Macau has been enjoying the bonus of China's mainland development uh, like high-tech industry has been also influencing the Macau. Mm -hmm. And we see uh, with the great university in Macau and lots of young talents are booming. And uh, they've been bonding and uh, cooperating with the mainland counterparts and, uh, you know, the local capitals uh, from China and now going to Macau and also the brain power and also the corporate management uh, resources also going to Macau. So high tech, of course, will become a very important uh, growth point in Macau. And also, like you mentioned, the finance is also very important. Macau enjoys probably similar uh, situation like Hong Kong. There's a free capital land. So uh, it also has a great potential to develop uh, as one of the other important uh, financial center of China. And also, uh, Macau also have a very uh, sound and complete legal systems. And it's also getting close to the European uh, tradition and the European uh, rule of law system. So I think uh, this will give Macau a lot of great potential in developing the financial industry. So are you implying that uh, to develop a, a financial center or a city uh, that was a booming financial industry, it's not necessarily uh, linked to the size of the city or the tradition of the financial industry in the city? Uh, you're saying that with the right policy, it can be done. Yes, I think finance is actually... What, what does finance mean? Finance means the flow of the capital and the money. So who do you flow your capital to? Mm -hmm. I think it's someone you trust or his system like the rule of law you trust. I think Macau actually have both of the condition. Just look at a lot of uh, good financial center in the whole world like uh, the Virgin Island, like uh, a lot of the Caribbean countries. Their land is actually very, very small, but doesn't impede them from being a very important uh, you know, financial hub in the whole globe. They played a very important role. So I think the uh, physical land size is really not uh, something matters. So have you seen any major policy uh, movement regarding uh, this particular sector or measures maybe? Yes, I do think so. Well, funny enough, Macau used to be, well, it is now also an uh, important gaming center. Well, what we're looking at is just a gambling and a game. But do you know what's behind the gambling? Mm. What does it make to have, uh, what does it take to become mm. a ga gaming center? Is you have a very sound legal system and financial system. Do you know how heavy the anti-money laundry laws, you know, have been posted to the gaming industry? So with that level of the rule of law, I think Macau actually has all kinds of policies towards a uh, mature financial center. Mm. So there, there is also news saying that, uh, implying maybe, there will be a new stock exchange in uh, Macau. Adding that to uh, the financial um, development, potential financial development, um, do you think Hong Kong is in competition with uh, Macau right now? Oh yes, I do think so. Or do you think it's complementary? I, I do think it's both, yes. Mm. Uh, what's the cornerstone of market economy? Competition. Because competition will urge all the players in the market to be more efficient, to be more clean, and to have better rule of law and regulations. Competition added to the utilities in the market. It benefits both the players and the consumers. So we endure the competition. This is a good thing. And in Macau, we're seeing if we're introducing in the future, uh, like stock exchange, and then we can have, uh, you know, a better competition between. Uh, 
Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Shenzhen, which is good news since you go to the department store. You wouldn't want just to have one thing to buy. You want to have choices, right? And also with that kind of setup, we're going to see more infrastructures also be located in Macau, so like uh, the offshore RMB clearing center uh, to just to go along with more and more ca uh, mainland capitals to flood into uh, Macau. Mm. So these are all going to be a good thing not only for China, but also for Macau, and also for Hong Kong and Shanghai, and also for the rest of the world. You have more choices. Right. Uh, Dr. Chu will be getting back to you on this. You're watching Dialogue on CGTN. Stay with us. So, Dr. Chu, let's continue uh, talking about this. Uh, we know Hong Kong and Macau are both parts of uh, the greater Bay Area. This is uh, China's national uh, strategy. Now, earlier you said uh, some industries um, don't require the size of a city. So for Macau, what is its core competitiveness in the Greater Bay Area strategy? Well, I think their core competitiveness is they do have an international, very highly internationalized vision, but they have a pure Chinese heart. This is a good combination. So. By this role, they can uh, leverage up both the advantage of China, the mainland, and also to use their international vision to introducing in the international rich or international standards. Mm. So let's hear more from people from uh, Macau. Uh, Professor Hu, you, your university has a quite large campus on, in Hengqing. Uh, we know this is an island just 200 meters from uh, the Macau urban area, and this is also a pilot zone not only in uh, the Greater Bay Area strategy, but in also in China's whole uh, further reform and opening up. Tell us more about your observation there. What does it mean for your students? Uh, you're right. Uh, actually, we are physically located in Zhuhai, China. Uh, this is the uh, land uh, uh, given us uh, on the lease uh, by the central government in 2009. And uh, we uh, built a brand new campus, which is um, about uh, 30 times larger than the old one. So now we have um, about 10,000 students and uh, much uh, improved space for uh, students and uh, professors to do research and teaching activities. So this is a, a good example of uh, how Macau can benefit from the further integration with the neighboring uh, region, especially the Greater Bay Area. So we can see that uh, Heng Qing is also mentioned in President Xi Jinping's keynote speech about uh, Macau's uh, future development. Uh, what would you say is the biggest achievement of this special area has achieved so far? Uh, I think, uh, as President Xi mentioned this morning, uh, Macau's future depends on how it will further integrate it into the Greater Bay Areas. Uh, the uh, February this year, central government um, uh, released the blueprint for the Greater Bay Area, and I think that gave Macau good opportunity for future development. Uh, in my personal view, there are few things Macau will benefit immensely. Uh, first. Uh, Macau is a very small, uh, tiny uh, place, only a little bit uh, more than uh, 30 square kilometers. So we do not have the space, and uh, we need uh, human talent. And of course, we are very uh, free, internationalized, um, uh, free port. So we have the capitals, and uh, but we need uh, f the uh, space to grow. So integration or collaboration with Hengqin that provide us that space. And so uh, in also in the central government's uh, s uh, plan to develop greater Bay Areas, Macau is, is positioning in, uh, in, uh, as one of the four core cities in the Greater Bay. So we are together with Shenzhen, uh, Guangzhou, and uh, Hong Kong, uh, be four core cities. So that's a uh, elevate our uh, status as uh, one of the uh, uh, cities, uh, especially a city in the west side of the Greater Bay. And uh, that gives us the chance to further grow and radiate our uh, you know, economic uh, energy to the nearby uh, uh, region, nearby uh, cities. 
So that's a very great for us. And uh, also, uh, you can see in the uh, central government blueprint, Macau also uh, been given or asked to do more uh, diversification of its economy. So we are now, um, uh, you can see the, the government trying to pump in money and resources to develop our uh, research and develop R&D. So we have a lot of uh, high tech in mind. Our university actually doing a lot of uh, high-tech related research for, the, for this region, for the, for the national project. So this is uh, really open up uh, the opportunity for, our, for, the, for Macau, for our young people, to, for the future they will have more opportunities. And we also know that uh, Hengqing area has been a hotbed for young entrepreneurs from Macau. And Dr. Tri, you are the perfect person to talk about this. Tell us more about the momentum so far. Uh, at the moment, uh, Hengqing has been designed mainly for Macau. As you know that for Hong Kong, it is Shanghai. And uh, Hengqing is a place that only uh, the Macau uh, company and the Macau people, Macau money, can uh, really invest in the Hang Chin. Therefore, it is specially designed for Macau. And as you understand that, Macau is a small place with a very small area. And we need to have a hinterland to support our development. And Hang Chin is one of the best places to do it. Therefore, for Hang Chin, I think they are not looking for those developers for property development. They are looking for technology, education, media, and many more. As I understand that, recently, uh, they are the media company uh, going into Hangqing, technology company, Chinese uh, medicine, and many more. And of, uh, of course, most importantly, is for the young people to have the innovation center in Hangqing. I just feel that Hangqing should increase the area because Hangqing, relatively speaking, is quite small uh, to support the development of Macau. Therefore, there's something that they will increase the land of Hangqing so that Macau is a bigger place for future development. So let's be a little bit specific on the uh, enthusiasm of entrepreneurship uh, in uh, Hengqing. Uh, how would you positioning this uh, island you just mentioned? Is it an incubator for entrepreneurs or it has now a established a system to fully support its startups and maybe uh, some uh, successful ones to go even further? I just feel that Hengqing is not only the place for innovation because for the young people and innovation, it is only part of the industry. And uh, recently, our union has established a, a think tank in Macau uh, talking about how we will work in the finance, technology, and cultural industry in Hangqing. And uh, I just feel in the future, there will be more big companies investing through Macau into uh, Hangqing. For example, for characteristic uh, finance industry and also technology. They are talking about aerospace, uh, talking about AI, uh, uh, the, uh, the green technology, all this in the Hang Chin. And for this industry, they will also attract the young people from Macau to work together with them. Therefore, uh, Hang Chin is not only the place for the uh, startup or innovation, because it takes uh, quite a long time for them to be successful. I think we need to attract more talent from Hong Kong, from the GBA, to uh, work together with Macau into Hang Chin. Looking at the, these kind of uh, enthusiasm from uh, uh, Macau's young people, uh, finding opportunities under the Greater Bay Area National Strategy. Now, when you are meeting with uh, young people in Hong Kong, what would you say to them? And when I talk to the young people in Hong Kong, I tell them that Hong Kong is only a small city with 7.5 million people. Uh, what is our future? We need to fully integrate with our motherland, the whole China. And more specific is the GBA, that is the uh, Greater Bay Area. Therefore, if we integrate with the Greater Bay Area, GBA is the support of the Belt and Road Initiative. Therefore, we can work with the mainland, and at the same time, we can go international. Therefore, we just feel that in the future for the young people, when we work together in the GBA, not only Hong Kong, not only in Macau, we have to work with all the uh, people from the mainland, and also we have to work internationally. For example, when we have the so-called youth center in the different parts of the cities in GBA, we cannot work alone, say Hong Kong Youth Center or Macau Youth Center. We can uh, name it as Youth uh, Center from Macau, but 
uh, the, uh, uh, the young people we welcome internationally. Thank you very much, Dr. Choi and uh, Professor Hu in uh, Macau. Now, Dr. Chu, uh, we've talked about Macau's economy, we've talked about the Greater Bay Area. Now, let's expand the scope to China's reform and opening up. How will uh, the successful implementation of one country, two systems policy and the experiment, if you will, on Hengqing Island and many similar pilot zones, how will they be conducive to China's overall reform and opening up in the new era to come? Well, I think one country, two systems is actually a blessing to China. I think we are the only country in the whole world who invented this system. You see, China is a very large country, and China has the largest population. So any major change in our system will have a cost. This is by the course, a famous economist. Any reform and implementation of a system or institution will have a cost, and the cost to put into China's shoes will be extremely large. So here we have one country, two system. So we can just try everything we might want to do in certain area, in the pilot zone or in Macau or in Hong Kong, and we'll see how it fits. And then we can then duplicate or demonstrate it to some other zones until we figure it out how it works. So actually, this system actually gives China a large flexibilities to try uh, the new ideas and the new systems while uh, we try to control the cost. So actually, when China wants to do any kind of reform, we can always follow this way, just across the river by filling the stones, mm. or we just try to set up a stone in the river and then to fill it. Mm. So this is actually China's advantage. Mm. Last but not least, one question about uh, your career identity, if you will. You are an educator yourself, teaching students from day to day. So we can see that uh, different mind settings and different content of education could lead to totally different results looking at the situations in Hong Kong and Macau nowadays. How important is education for the future development of special administrative regions? I think education is actually the most, not the only most, not the one of the most, but the only most important things in a country. So first of all, if you want, to, you know, the human society's development is based on human cooperation. So you, first of all, you have to think like one and then you can act like one. Macau has actually a forward thinking. They think maybe China has something we need to learn and uh, because education is their fully their own choices. So Macau followed China's education and thinking, but just within a few years, China becomes the number two economy in the whole world. It proves China does have something to show for the world. China does have something worth learning. And then Macau, because of their education and then formed their own uh, identity uh, recognition, and then with this uh, thinking like one, and Macau and China act like one, and then they're accelerated in their economic development. Uh, but funny enough, do you know any other country also wants to learn from China? Singapore. Mm. Uh, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew used to be uh, one of the earliest advocates to learn Chinese culture back in the 1980s. Mr. Lee Kuan Yew re-educated Singapore with Chinese and Confucius culture. They tried to build a Confucius culture country. And now look at Singapore. Singapore used to have the similar GDP like Hong Kong and now probably already doubled the size. So education and culture recognition does play a very important role in economic development. Mm. Good to know. Thank you very much, Dr. Chu Chang from the Renmin University of China. And that's it for this edition of Dialogue on CGTN. I'm Pandong in Beijing. Bye-bye.